188 plus 2000. It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 9, Wow! Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I just turned in from Sergeant Joe Kelly about the Freedom Pens. And we had 188,000 pens turned up until Saturday. But then we had 2,000 pens turned in, so we're over 190,000 pens turned for the troops. I'll tell you more about that and a whole lot more, but all you got to do first, you know the deal, you got to watch. Wow, 190,000 pens. That's coming up on some kind of milestone. I think it means that in about two or three months we'll be over 200,000 pens. Yeah, and you can be part of that. And how you do it is, you turn pens for our troops. You send them to Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly gets them turned over to the right guys. Those guys get them turned over to the folks that protect our well-being. That is, the young men and women of our military. Yes. And I say young because when you get to be my age, that's what they are, young. So if you want to be involved, all you got to do is check out this address for more details. It's not that happy of a time here in the shop. Management came out. I asked them to take a couple of pictures so we can incorporate them in a website, a newsletter, and eh, other stuff. And she came back with a box of powder to take the sheen down. Well, this morning it was time to get a haircut. And around here when I get a haircut, it's done with something that looks like a razor. Um, it's just an electric lawnmower. And uh, she cleaned it all up and got rid of all the fuzzies and all that because the doctor laid her on today. So it got to look kind of good for the doctor. <clears throat> she says I have to reduce the white, the glare from this because what didn't turn gray turned loose. Feel free to use that. That's for my granddaughter. Um, granddaughter number two. Oh, and she was the princess in last Thursday night or Friday night's homecoming court at her high school. And she was a darling, just a darling. Really was. I think she lost the bet and had to wear the hat she had. But hey, you know, she was really good looking. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about tools. I'm still not well enough to crank up the lathe and do a lot of turning out here. What's the problem? A little bit of hand strength. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. I'm not 100%, but I'm close. But if I push it, then I could get hurt, and that would put me a lot further away. So we're not going to push it. Um, I'm coming out here to the shop tomorrow to start building the Blackhawk sharpening rigs. You know what the Blackhawk sharpening rig is? It's on the grinder back there. It's the base and the arm and at two positions for doing the, the Ellsworth grind and the Super Ellsworth grind or the Ellie Avisara grind and the other one for the skew and it can be adapted to, to different things. It comes in one kit, one box. And this is the price of it. This is what you get. Now, that's not shipping. Shipping, if you live in the U.S., is right there. $7 to ship it to you in one of those literary boxes. But if I have to ship it overseas, that goes up by maybe another 10 or $12. It depends on where it's going, how fast it's got to get there, and if you got to feed the donkey once or twice to get it to you. So, but we're going to go back to making those jigs. It's the Black Hawk Sharpening Jig. There's no additional parts or anything else available right now. It's the simple box. When I get them made, I'm boxing them, and I'm handing them management, and she's going to ship them out. So if you're interested, you can call us at this number right here. And you can order one. Now, we're going to take all the information and your credit card number. But we're not going to charge you for it until we actually put it in the mail to you. And it'd be about a week before we get them all mailed. We'll get the first batch mailed out. And if it looks like it's going to be a little bit hard or too much work or whatever, we'll back off a little bit. But I've got a game plan where I think I can do these things.
So, and, and I tell you, it is the biggest item that we have in our inventory that we're out of stock of. We just don't have them. And all the ones I had, management, being a good woman that she is, um, she sold them all last year. I mean, she sold everything. I'm lucky my underwear didn't go. But then it was going for a small pup tent. Uh, <clears throat> she has been bugging me to find somebody to build them. We couldn't find anybody to build them without us having to pay them more than you're paying us. That's just the way things worked. So we're not we're not really upset about it. We're just trying to get it to where we can get it down to something manageable. Okay? And with this price right here, and including the freight, it's manageable. It's something you can handle. So, all right, let's talk a little bit now about SKUs. Um, because I keep getting these questions, and I don't mind them. I get these questions from wood turners who say, look, I want to do this and this and this, but I don't have, uh, I'm afraid of my skew. Well, I can tell you what, folks. At one point, a long time ago in a land far, far away, I had a beautiful skew. Beautiful. It came in one of these kits. And that's the problem. It came in one of these kits. It wasn't good steel. wasn't It was barely tool steel. It was fat and heavy, had square corners on it, and it dug into the tool rest. It dug into the piece. It was just awkward and hard to work with. Well, I finally decided it's time to go away. So I took it out and jugged it in the ground next to the door keep the door from swinging back and making noise. It's the only thing I could figure out to do with it. Then I went to a workshop and a guy named Larry Zara was there. He was a member of the Bayou Wood Turners and he was showing us how to turn something and I sat right in front of him. I just had my uh, gallbladder removed the week or two before and I wasn't supposed to pick up anything and I hadn't been listening and back hurt, stomach hurt, butt hurt, everything. So I sat down right in front of him and watched him work. And I watched Larry take that tool and just take us some slight, some passes on that. And we had all kinds of guys talking. It was an after hours thing. And I said, whoa, 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 guys, back up. Watch this. And they backed up and they started watching. And I said, Larry, make that cut. And Larry shh, slid it off. When he took off the outside of that top, you could hold up and read the paper through it. It was so finely sliced, and it was sliced. It wasn't cut, it wasn't gouged, it wasn't skewed, it was sliced. Larry had it to where you could slice it. And I said, now, how the heck did you do that? And we got to looking at his tool, and this is a rough drawing, okay? His tool I don't, I, you know, I can't find all my stuff. The, the place got cleaned up while I was gone. But oh wait. Oh, no, we might have a marker here that we can do this with. But Larry's tool was sharpened in a rather unusual way. And I got to thinking about it. The sharpeners made a jig that would sit out on the arm in front of the grinder, just like the one I make for doing your, your gouges. And you'd put your gouge, your, your skew in there, and you go back and forth. And you ended up, go back to the kit again. Let me get this right so you understand it. That was the that was the cut, the angle. See how it's dipped in on the end over here? 
because that match that match the angle or the 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 arc of the wheel and you just go back and forth and get it so perfect and every time you want to sharpen it that's where you went you went over there and did that and then you took and you owned off that corner Larry said it's a lot of steel on the floor and I paid a lot of money for that steel so why don't we sharpen it like this like a bullet nose just like that and guess what if you sharpened it like that just with that long tapered round and then you picked up your sharpening stone and you dropped it out to clean up and I can't find the stone I had it here five minutes ago um, but then you get your stone and you drop it out and I like to tell folks to take it and set it right here in front of God and everybody and take your stone and dress off the edge roll it around and dress off the other edge why? Because all you want to do is touch up that point. Just that point. All you need to do is stroke that back a little bit and get that razor sharp. You don't have to put it down on something and rub it back and forth and all that. Why? Man, you see all these extra parts moving? You guys are as old as I am. Some of you guys make me look like a kid. Some of you guys are older than rocks. You, can't, you don't have all those parts to move. And if you did, they hurt when you get done. Use it for wood turn and save some lives. All right. So you just take that stone and you touch up that very edge. I got a video on that someplace. I know you. By the way, if you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Hit the stop button. Find the subscribe thing. Press the subscribe thing, and it's gonna it's gonna pick you up and it'll mail you an alert every time we do a video. But let's go back to this. <clears throat> we have a video on how to sharpen it and how to dress it up. Now when you touch it up, and by the time I'm ready to do this again, I'll be back out in the shop and I'll make a big wooden one that you can see. But when you go to make the cut, you're cutting with just that point and you're hinging off the back part of it. Oh yeah, by the way, that angle right there, that angle, that's 25 degrees from point to point, 25 degrees. I use my little protractor from Home Depot. You get that 25 degrees. Where the hell did that go? There's going to be an investigation. All right, 25 degrees. That's all you need. If that thing is fat like a 45, that's a lot of. That's a. That's a lot. You don't have any control over it. Let's go to 25 degrees. Get to 25 degrees. Okay, and then have a little bullet on it. Then just sharpen a point. Why? Because you want to go across cutting on the point, but you're going to be rotting that big fat bevel that's behind it. That's going to be a control point. You have that bevel to slide along, and when you want to make the cut, you twist your wrist a little bit closed, or a little bit like, like this. How do you describe which way it is? It ain't this way, it's this way. So if this is open, this is closed? I don't know. But you just turn your hand a little bit, and the cutter will just roll around, and make contact with the piece and take a slice. That's what you want to see. Now if you're taking this thing and you're juking it into the wood and you got shavings flying all over the place, no, you, 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 you're, you're chopping at it. And you don't want to chop at it, you just want to cut it. That's all. So, we have the piece and we're going to take a nice slice off of it. And we're going to slide back. I'm not going to take it off and go, oh look, hey Poppy, look at that. No, 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 no. He can see it. He'll see it later. He'll see it when it's polished and looks good. You slide the tool back, you roll it over a little bit, and you come back again. You open it up, come back again. Watch this hand action. Every time you go back, you're taking a little slice. You're cleaning it up. Now, let me tell you what it'll look like. If you get it right, and oh yeah, by the way, you're cutting way above center. You're way up here on this piece that's round. You're way up high. Why? Because you want to take a slice. If you didn't want to take a slice, you'd be hitting at it way down here. And you, all, that, all that crap would be flying off. You, you, you understand it? That's a technical term. But you stick it in there and it'll come off. Yeah, 
You could do the same thing with that shovel I got leaning against the wall out there. You could cut the same thing. I can do it with a soup spoon. I can do it with a forstner bit. I can do it. You can make shavings fly with anything, but it's getting the right cut that you want. So, when you have that skew and you slide it across and you take that little miniature or that little micro slice off, and that's a technical term. Yes. Okay. Then you've got it really coming out right. Now, we'll talk more another time about how to take that, get up on the top of the, on the bottom of the point, and roll around the corner to put a little deep in, and what, you can flip it over and get some use out of it the other way. Flip it over, yeah. Most of the time, the cuts with the skew are made. Skew's got a face on it like this. <clears throat> we'll talk angle in a minute. But you want the point up to take that slice. If you want detail, point down. Just like that. This is hard to do. I'm wondering where the hell the, the tool went. Um, but, is it right here? Nope. Is it right here? Nope. I had it here five minutes ago. Management was out here. She's got this habit of lifting up all my stuff and taking it away. Look, she did my hair. All right. So, angle. All right, we talked about the angle to 25 degrees. The other angle is across the face. What's the angle? Mine's only about 15, 18 degrees off of being vertical. That matches the jaws on my Ellsworth, my uh, one-way chuck. That angle, it matches because I use it to put the little socket in to make it work to do this. That's what happened to the skew. This has got a little bit of negative break on it. You see how that comes down a little bit? Get it in front of something that's not ugly, so I gotta get out the picture. See that little rake right there? Well, that is what mine is ground to. So I can take my skew, turn it off on the side, go in and put that groove on there, and it's gonna match my, my chuck every time. It's gonna match it up. And matching up that chuck means I get a better grip on what I'm doing. I don't get the movement. And I was in a workshop with a guy, I was teaching a class. One of the British turners uh, was teaching a class. And he kept telling folks, put that little fitting up. I had a guy that's been turning only about 10, 12 years. He really liked it. But, he got which direction that went in the wrong direction. About the third time he hit me with that block of wood, coming off his lathe, I went over and said, now what he won't come do, I'll come do. I'm going to take this thing and hit you upside the head if it comes off your lathe again. You don't want that to happen. So let's talk about this angle. It goes in, so when it's grabbed, the piece won't come flying out. Hey! Wonderful. That's what I was trying to explain to him. That's what happens. So, that's the second angle. That angle, whether it's curved or straight, it can't be a negative. Ooh, no, it can't be a negative. Why? You can't handle all that change. You really can't. So, you want it to be straight or a little bit fat. Either one works for me, but once you grind it and get it shaped up, you never go back to the grinder with that thing again. You won't, you won't, well, I say never. You probably will because you, you're going to hit the chuck with it or you're going to drop it on the floor or something like that. But most of the time, you don't have to go back to the grinder to dress that up. You take it over. I know I'm going to turn these things up and all of a sudden it's going to be my skew right there. Uh, you turn the piece over and you hold it up and you dress it off. When you dress it off, it looks brand new and beautiful. And you didn't grind it. So, you don't have a lot of money laying on the floor down there below your grinder. No. Your money's in the tool and it's ready to go. And that's where you want to be.
So, we talked a little bit. When I get better and I can do more turning, big, big, big squirrels chasing each other right on my patio. But we talk more about turning and I show you more about using it. We'll do a little bit something like that, okay? And don't forget that jig is available right now at this phone number. Yep. You can call and you can order it. And hey, if you don't get through, leave a message and I will call you back. And the other thing is too, we still have the best prices in the entire world <clears throat> or planet or stratosphere or, 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 or on carbide cutters. Everybody's going to them. Everybody wants them. We got cutters to fit almost every tool made out there. How do you figure out what we got? Hmm. How do you figure that out? Ah. You take your micrometer. And you measure the width of the cutter at its widest point. Then you go to my website, www.eddiecastellan.com, go to Cutters Only, it's funny how it's named, Cutters Only page, and you look that cutter up, and you'll find it. Three in a pack. Now, things are kind of tight, and you can't afford to buy three of something. Talk to us about it. Now, we already pay somebody to repackage those things and get them ready for you. Why? That's the way the world works. Okay? And we're trying to help some veterans out that need, I call it nickel money. Then they, they can work with their hands, but they can't work with their legs or such and such. So they repackage them. Now, when I start busting these packs open, I gotta get recompensated. I gotta get compensated for that. So we mark them up a buck or two. I forgot what management does. But we'll sell you singles. But I do ask that you buy three or four cutters. Gotta help offset some of this price some. Alright, now we got we covered the cutters, the Black Hawk rig, we have the layout template, we have the Playzilla plans. We have a handful of other things on the website, all for you, the wood turner. So if you get a chance, go check that thing out. And then make it one of your favorite spots. I can't explain how to do that. I just figured out how to work the computer again. And it's funny. You push this little button over here, it goes blue. And a minute or two later, a little music comes on. And then a minute or two later, it's, yeah. That's what it's all about. So if you'd like to check out more, go there and check it out. Well, I got to mention that I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. We've been making shavings, and I hope to see you back again real soon. What else I got? You know what? I want to turn this thing around, and I'm going to find that skew. Because without that skew, I can't finish the article for the newsletter that's out right now. And if you want the newsletter, go to the front page of my website, www.eddiecastellan.com. All the way to the bottom, and you'll see newsletters. And the yeah, October should be there. And that's where it's going to be. See you later. Take care. Where the hell is that? Man? Yeah, I just figured it'd fall out of the air. I just want to show you. I didn't lose my mind. It was right there on the grinding station. That's the skew. That's the right to the back. Flip it over, erase the front. You really have to see this when you work with it. But your first thing is, when you change that grind that's on there, because when this is ground at the manufacturer, they only have one thing. They have a grinder. Don't you get it. You don't want that. You want to have a nice sweeping range on it. Then it's really going to be fine. I'm going to put a bell on it. I don't want it to walk away. <laughs>